Uh, there is nationalism, and then there is some of the extreme versions of that, okay? In general, what nationalism means is that we recognize the uniqueness and the sovereignty of nations that, are, that have unique culture, unique governance, and unique borders, and unique people, and solidified by, typically by language, by culture, and even faith. And in that sense, we have to rec we're all nationalists because if we don't believe in nations, then we are globalists, which means we believe there are no borders, there are no distinctives, all nations are the same, and I don't believe that. I think some nations are better than others. For example, I would rather live in the United States of America than North Korea. Does anybody wanna live in North Korea? Okay, then you're a nationalist. Uh, so there is an extreme version of that that says no, uh, like white Christian nationalism, that America was a white nation, that we're a Christian nation only, that we need to Christianize it, we need to lock it down, completely close the borders, no immigration, and, and that type of thing. That's, that's like the extreme, extreme version of that. But nationalism is, I think, it's a, it's a very... I think it's an accurate term. Men that we all respect, like C.S. Lewis, defined himself as a nationalist, a Christian nationalist. So did G.K. Chesterton, who was a Catholic philosopher, uh, scholar, theologian. Uh, these, uh, nationalism just says, look, I recognize that nations are the unique creation of a people that have a common language, culture, geography, history together, and another word for nationalism uh, is patriotism. Now, I believe all people are beautiful and wonderful and loved by God. God's desire is to save all people. God, des God loves the beauty. Someday, when we're all gathered around the throne of the Lamb, there are going to be people from every language and every nation. So even then, there's going to be a celebration of the unique cultures there's gonna be people from Asia gathered around the throne and it's gonna be beautiful. There's gonna be people from Africa and it's gonna be beautiful. And there's gonna be people from America and it's gonna be beautiful. Uh, and God recognizes nations. Matthew 25 says when Jesus returns, he's actually going to judge nations, which means God recognizes the uniqueness of nations. I think it's in Acts 17 or 18 where Paul is preaching in Athens and he actually says God's the one who establishes people in nations. He says he sets them in places and determines their boundaries, in other words, their borders, in order that that might be used to, ca to cause them to seek and to pursue God. And so there's nothing wrong with recognizing the uniqueness of our nation. America is not a perfect nation. America has historic sins. Uh, slavery was a historic sin. Uh, that we uh, are still bearing the brunt of. We're not a perfect nation, but we're a union that's trying to improve. Today, we have abortion that uh, I truly believe someday we're gonna look back on in the same way that we looked at slavery and say, I can't believe that we did that to human beings. But in the midst of that, we have a government that is built on Judeo-Christian values. It is, it's not perfect, but it is, it's, it's the best form of government uh, that humans have ever encountered or experimented with, where citizens have a voice, where there can be freedom of speech and dissent uh, and debate of ideas, where there's a flourishing economy. And you know what? I'm proud of that. I am proud to be an American. Now, I don't equate my faith with my Americanism, but I know that I am distinctly an American, and therefore, I don't think that there's anything wrong with patriotism or even having pride in our nation, as long as it doesn't cause you to hate other nations. Uh, we love them. And as Christians, we're called to the nations of the world. We're called to bring the gospel to them. Now, the opposite of nationalism is globalism. And I think one of the big threats that is facing this generation and the future is elites that are trying to develop a globalistic society, breaking down national borders and creating a one world government. And I think it is the obvious conspiracy that is right in front of our eyes in plain sight where we're trying to break down economic, dispar di economic differences, the uh, 
organizations like the World Economic Forum, that's not fake news, that's real. If they've got 14 unique nations that have signed on to their 2030 plan where basically they wanna take away human rights, they wanna take away personal property, they wanna take away national sovereignty, and they, they want to form a, a, a one world government. Can they do that by 2030? I don't know. But I know that in order to do that, they're going to have to deconstruct national constitutions and sovereignties like the United States. And I don't stand for that. I believe in the globalistic approach to the gospel, but nationalistic patriotism and loving the land in which God has put us in. 